we're in the house of the Lord. So good to have you with us tonight. It's good to have uh, those of you watching live stream. Appreciate everybody coming out tonight. I'm trusting that you had a great day. God has just richly blessed you. I tell you, I'm excited. I'm, I'm thankful for what God's done in my life. I'm excited to be here tonight. Glad that it's church time. I'm glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. That's an awesome time. Hallelujah. We get in His presence. And we get in His presence together as a group. One mind and one accord. And we can worship Him tonight. He's still on the throne. He's still working for us on our behalf. All we need to do is worship and honor Him. I come to worship the Lord tonight. Did you come to worship the Lord? Amen. Did you come to give Him praise and thanksgiving? Did you come to lift His name on high? Did you come to let God uh, be seen and shown throughout your life and around you when you're everywhere you go? People see Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what I come for. Hallelujah. Get that filling up so that I can get past Monday and Tuesday and then back to the house of the Lord on Wednesday. Hallelujah. Just excited about what God's doing, how He's blessing, how He's touching their lives and touching their hearts. We're going to open up in prayer. Welcome His presence. Let His power and His anointing shine forth in our lives tonight. If you will, you just pray and help us tonight as we pray and ask God to have His presence be known. Heavenly Father, we thank You for allowing us to be in Your house to serve and honor You. Thank You for allowing us to be here in Your house, God. You've been so good to us. We can never thank You enough for praise You We thank You for what You've done. Lord, you reached out and you touched lives time and time again. you reached out and touched lives and you ministered our hearts and souls. You've done a mighty work. Lord, we thank you for each and every one here. We thank you for everyone that's watching live stream, everyone that'll be here tonight. God, we thank you for everyone that was here this morning, Lord, everyone that was given this morning. Lord, we thank you for everything, God. You gave us a beautiful day. You gave us prayer. You gave us an opportunity to come praise you, Lord. It's our decision. It's our choice. We praise you. We not praise you. But Lord, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord tonight, God. It's your night and we're going to praise you. Lift your name on God. Lord, help us to be in one mind and one accord. Whatever differences, whatever problems, whatever situations, Lord, let us leave it at your feet. Let us lay it down right now, Lord, so we get our minds in tune with you. Our minds where it needs to be. We get in one mind and one accord to praise you and honor you. Lord, so that your Holy Ghost and Lord can shine forth. You come down tonight in a mighty, miraculous way and touch our lives. Lord, let your will be done in the service tonight. Not our will, but your will. <clears throat> let your power and your authority shine forth. Lord, do the work tonight, God. Only you can do it. We believe you. We trust you. We welcome you in this place to have your way. We give you praise, Lord, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. The church said, Amen. And if you'll stand with us, page 277 in your hymn. 277.
to have you in the house of the Lord. Appreciate you watching. Good Lord, in prayer, take needs of our church. Let's remember our lost loved ones that we say before it's eternally too late. Also, our children. God will bless our children, minister in our homes and our families. <clears throat> also, let's keep our country in prayer. God will touch. Help people to turn back to the Lord. Let's keep Miss Mary in prayer. Miss Brenda in prayer. Also, let's keep the Lakeland family in prayer. Uh, also, keep Don Whitley in prayer. Lord will touch. Lord will bless. Keep Marsha's family in prayer. They're traveling in Florida. God will keep his hand on them. Uh, also, uh, I called to uh, see about picking up uh, uh, Micaiah and uh, Tyler, and they was on their way home with their dad from uh, out of town, so we pray that God will have mercy on them, traveling mercy. God will touch them and minister in their need. Let's continue to keep Sister Hattie in prayer. Lord will touch her and minister in her life. Also, Brother Danny, Lord will keep blessing his blood pressure and Sister Carolyn and their family, uh, Sister Carolyn's uncle and aunts. Lord will touch them, minister in their need. Also, keep Brother George in prayer. Lord, to touch him. Lord, to touch his son out in Las Vegas. God, be moved and minister in a mighty way. Hallelujah. We also keep Sister Angel's mom, Kathy, in prayer. Lord, to touch her. Continue to strengthen her and bless her in a mighty way. Also, keep Gage in prayer. Keep uh, Remember, Gage, Lord, to keep touching him. Uh, he's still seizure-free. As far as I know, still seizure-free, but uh, still needs a touch from the Lord. God knows all about it. Now, let's, let's ask God to touch Gage and minister in his need. I wonder if you have a request tonight like to give in. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep praising. Yes. Yes.
heard back. I accepted a volunteer position as the outreach director for the place where Shannon speaks at Washington, D.C. I never do that from home, and it's great. And I began volunteering for Shield, North Carolina, and I in research. And here in a week or two, this is my third year of the position for me. Even though I'm not getting paid right now, I'm more thrilled than ever to do the work that I desire to do, and I'm not thrilled about the college to do. I just feel incredibly blessed.
on the solid rock. Amen. A lot of people's got religion, but not Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't want to have religion. We want to have Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah in our life. Jesus is the one. Yes, he's, he's the only one. Hallelujah. Don't forget about our announcements. Most important one, Jesus is coming soon. Don't forget about that. Jesus is coming soon. We've got to be ready. got to be prepared at all times. He might come tonight. Praise the Lord. Wouldn't it be great if he came before this service is over and we just took off to be with the Lord forever? Shout and praise the Lord. Wouldn't have to worry about pain. Wouldn't have to worry about heartache or sorrow. Wouldn't have to worry about nothing tomorrow but praise of Jesus. Would that not be awesome to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord? Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Also, in our vestibule on the uh, podium, there's a sign-up sheet. If you'd like to go visit, be part of the visitation team, please sign your name, uh, available times, days, your phone number, things like that. Uh, Sister Candace will be getting with you soon. In a few weeks, uh, we'll start this up. Uh, she's heading this, uh, heading this up and put her in charge of the visitation committee and teams. And so, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I encourage you to, uh, if you can help out and visit, I mean, it's not going to be every week. You might only go once a month. It might be every two months. But uh, if you'd like to visit sometime and, and help out the church and, and witness to people, please sign up back there. Also, there's a there's some forms back there. If you know someone that's unchurched or sick or just needs a visit, please put their name, phone number, address on there and put your name and phone number so we can, if you need details or whatever, uh, we can uh, talk to you. And then take that slip, fold it up, put it in that wooden box on the table back there in the vestibule. And there's a log on that box. So, uh, uh, only Candace or I'll be able to see as far as what's put on those notes. Then she'll assign whoever she needs to assign to go where and when. So don't forget about that. Praise the Lord. Got a lot of things happening, a lot of things coming up. Tuesday night conference call at 7. Be invited. Tell people, get on the conference call and have devotion and prayer with us. Just excited. We have a good time. It's usually 30 to 40 minutes, somewhere in that range. Uh, we have a good time uh, on Tuesday nights at 7. Don't forget Wednesday night service at 7. Be invited. Be telling people uh, next Sunday, Sunday school at 10. We'll worship 11, Sunday night at 6. Next week's Mother's Day. Next Sunday morning will be a special service. You don't want to miss that, if at all possible, next Sunday morning, Mother's Day. So uh, don't forget about uh, don't forget about that. Also coming up, May the 15th, Saturday, May the 15th, 9 o'clock, we'll have a church cleanup day. If you can uh, spend two of your hours, uh, be here at 9 o'clock, spend about two hours helping us at the church, uh, we'd appreciate that. Uh, on Saturday, May the 15th, Saturday, May the 22nd, the children, the youth, the, any adult that wants to go, is going to go to the soup kitchen and help uh, feed the people to come in, help hand, hand out the food. So it's a great opportunity to minister and to be a part of our church and outreach. So please do that um, and, uh, and help in that manner and uh, in, that, in, in that way. Also coming up the last Sunday of March, March 30th, that night after service, we're going to have finger foods in the fellowship hall. If you bring the finger foods, it'll get eat or uh, until people's full or we run out. So don't forget about that. On March 30th, that night, we'll honor and celebrate birthdays and anniversaries for January through May. Uh, then on June the 5th, Saturday, June the 5th, uh, yard sale. Uh, don't forget about that. See Sheila or Angel to give them your $10. The money goes to the youth the fund, the youth account. Uh, for the youth to help do things. Gonna be, the youth's going to be doing a lot of things coming up, a lot of different activities, getting some things for uh, for the youth activities and stuff. So um, if you'd like to uh, purchase a, a place, uh, rent a spot, a table uh, for $10, just $10, uh, then everything you sell on your table, whatever is your money, you do with it like you like uh, because it's just a fundraiser. And we do this because it doesn't put, uh, you know, people, you know, having to work, getting things out, getting things in. Everybody's responsible for their own um, their own things. You know, if someone wants to uh, uh, bake something and sell that, that's your business. If you're a baker and you like to bake pies and cakes or whatever you bake, then you can have your table for that. But if you would see Sheila or Angel if you decide to do that. Saturday, Sunday morning, Jan June the 6th, <coughs> sorry to say January, June the 6th is family and friends Sunday morning. So be invited. We tell the people there will be a monetary prize for the adult and, for, and one for the teenager or the youth child that brings the most visitors on Sunday morning, June the 6th. The only, uh, the only rule that there is is to be counted as a visitor towards the monetary prize is, they, is it has to be someone that hasn't been here the last six months uh, in, 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 at church. So it, 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 it's open. There's thousands of people in Stanley County that have never been to church. Thousands of people in Stanley County that don't go to church. Thousands of people in Stanley County that would love for someone to invite them 
and ask them to come to church with them one Sunday. So June the 6th is your Sunday, your opportunity to shine, your opportunity to, to go above and beyond and invite. Hallelujah. So, you know, you can, I've given you a head notice. You can start now. You can have people put it on their calendars. People put it on their schedule that, hey, June the 6th, I'm going with brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so to church that day. It's Friends Day, and I'm going. So don't forget about that. It's, it's exciting. I'm excited about that, excited about what God's doing. Also, don't forget to be praying for you people. I've got cards to pass out tonight for people to uh, uh, that you'll be praying for for the month of May. We'll start a new month, first Sunday of the month of May, so we'll start a new month. So we're passing these cards out. I need you to pray. I need you to be praying for people in the church, one another, lifting each other up, and uh, at, at, at all extra. Besides the normal time of prayer, do this extra, and uh, it'll increase uh, increase um, what you're doing for God. Hallelujah. A lot of announcements. Have I missed any? Um, I need all the children here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, neighbors' children, community children, make sure you are bringing them or have them here Wednesday night to do their activity for Mother's Day. Mother's Day. We celebrate uh, We celebrate Mother's Day maybe a little different than a lot of people. We celebrate Mother's Day for every, uh, every lady, uh, whether they have a biological child or not, uh, every lady because at some point every lady is a mentor to someone in the church, some young girl, some young boy in the church. Every lady is a mentor to somebody. So they, they are a spiritual mom. And so that so we celebrate Mother's Day. And we, we honor Mother's Day a little different than a lot of people do <coughs> because uh, you know uh, that's just that's just the way God's placed in, in our spirit, in our heart. So that's what we do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Any other announcements? I know that's a lot. To take in. Uh, if you haven't gotten a bulletin, didn't get a bulletin this morning, please get one. It tells uh, pretty much almost all of those announcements I told, uh, all those ones. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother George, I'm sorry. I forgot to have you open up tonight. It slipped my mind. I didn't even think nothing about it. I'm sorry. For what? For not allowing you to open up tonight. I didn't even think nothing about it. You should have said, preacher, I'm supposed to open up. Praise the Lord. I just get on the roll and I get to go. And I'm sorry, Brother George. I, that you, you were supposed to open up, but I didn't tell you and I didn't ask you. And you didn't say that. I'm sorry. That's all right. Well, we'll yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Man, get excited. Get on. Just excited. I forget where I'm going, what I'm doing. Praise the Lord. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Because as I said in the past, we, Brother George is going to be opening up services. And I'm going to get some more people involved with opening up services and doing things. Kind of give everybody... Something to do, praise the Lord, and uh, to help out. Hallelujah. All right, this time we'll receive our evening tithe and offering. We're going to ask, uh, we're going to ask Brandon, <coughs> and you did this morning, didn't you? Okay. We're going to ask um, Manny. <laughs> okay, how about Callum? My goodness, first time I've been turned down for an offer taker. Well, excuse me, second time, second time, but not by the same person. Praise the Lord. Huh? She said, no way, honey, by the look on her face. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Thank you for everyone that's here, everyone that's watching live stream, Lord. We thank you for your blessings you give us today. God, you've touched us in a mighty way. Lord, I'm just excited about you tonight, God. Lord, I can't contain myself, but I thank you. I thank you for an opportunity to give, Lord. Lord, I ask you to bless the gift of the giver of those that have to give those that don't have. Lord, use it for the good of your kingdom. Use it for your name's sake. Use it to uh, just reach down and further your ministry, God. Just do a mighty word. Bless each and every life, each and every heart, Lord. Tenfold, hundredfold, God. Do the work. We love you tonight and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. The church say it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Worship the Lord is Miss Rita. Come to this question. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me just ask everybody tonight, has anybody in here ever had a bad day? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, y'all don't sound like it. Maybe I'm the only one. I don't know. Uh, has anybody? 
anybody in here ever had a bad week? Yes. Amen. <laughs> well, as most of you know, I was down for like four weeks and couldn't talk, which most of you probably figured that was a blessing, not a <laughs> hindrance. But I'm telling you, <laughs> during those four weeks, I couldn't talk much, so it was like I had to pray through. And I, I'm like everybody else, all of you, I get down, I get weary, I get weak, I get down and out, and I cry and have my pity party like everybody else. Usually they don't last long, but this time it lasted a lot longer than I wanted it to. Although it's my own fault when you can't pick yourself up and move on for God. But you know the thing that hinders me the most I can take what happens to my body, what happens in my life, but when I'm taken away from serving the Lord, that gets me more than anything. And when I go four weeks and can't do anything for God, because I know my calling was to sing, yeah. and He took me out for four weeks, whatever the reason, I don't know. But thank God it's starting to come back now. Yes. But I'm telling you, Right now, the thing you got to do is hold on to Jesus and a lot of prayer to get you through. I want to praise God and thank everybody that was praying for me during that time. My voice still might not be 100%, but I've been anointed, I've been prayed for, and God has come down and touched. And we're going to still believe God to finish it, to do the work, and His mighty hand can touch anything and make it all right. But you know, when you get in that place, the only thing that you have to do is believe in Him, call on Jesus, because He is our Savior, and He is our everything and our reason for living. Yes, he is. This song came to my mind this morning. I didn't have anything to sing tonight. And it came to my mind. I said, praise God, you got to give it to me tonight. you got to help me sing it. So I'm going to try to do this because it is all about Him. Yes. And when we get in a time of need and a time of dis distraught and a time that we can't even help ourselves, that's when we hold on yeah. to the hand of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Who cares? Yeah. 
a saying I always had and I still have is if they're talking about you, they're worried about you. Yep. Praise the Lord. You know what? The devil's been talking for a long time about old, old crazy David Shaker. You know what? He's worried about me. Because if I can, I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus. If I can, I'm going to witness for the Lord. If I can, I'm going to be who the Lord wants me to be. If I can, I'm going to reach out to the lost at any cost. If I can, I'm just going to keep doing what God tells me to do. Hallelujah. And be who he wants me to be. Just work for the glory of God. Hallelujah. You have your Bibles? Ephesians chapter 3. You have your Bibles? Ephesians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Ephesians 3 and 14. Good to have you in the house of the Lord. You can see each and every one here, everyone watching live stream. Appreciate you. Thank you. Hallelujah. The Lord's blessing, the Lord's touching. God's sending people in. God's going to keep sending people. We've had a lot of visitors the past couple of months. Pray that there'll be all the visitors will come back. Pray that other visitors will come in. God's going to send from the north, south, east, and west. He's going to bless this church if you'll be faithful and you'll be obedient to God. God's going to use you, each and every one here, as a vessel, as a witness to help others to know Jesus. So just hold on, hang on, continue to trust God, and God will deliver you and help you. <clears throat> Ephesians 3, beginning verse 14. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the powers that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout of all ages, world without end. Amen. Heavenly Father, come before you this day, loving you and praise you. Lord, the message, message one more time, God. <clears throat> Pour out of heaven upon us, whatever's received from you, will be what you have to me. We love you tonight and we praise you and we honor you tonight, God. Ask you, Lord, the ears, the mouths, and the hearts tonight. Do a mighty word, stir us up, and be your people. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus. Holy oh, name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. It's what you have. It's what you have. I'm not talking about worldly possessions tonight. Whether you've got a dollar in the bank or you've got trillions of dollars in the bank, that's not what I'm talking about. Whether you have one car or you have 45 cars, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the worldly possessions. I'm not talking about how many nice suits or nice dresses you have. What I'm talking about tonight is what you have spiritually, what you have in your life, what you keep, what you allow to work in your life, what you allow to lead you in your life, what you allow to be part of your life, all that's related to, all that's uh, uh, related to God, and all that can be in your life. You see, uh, Jesus is able to exceedingly do abundantly above all that we ask to think according to the power that worketh in us, in who? In us. We have power from on high, we have power of God, and God is able to do great things in our life if we'll allow him to, and we'll be what we need to be. Now we understand tonight everyone is familiar with what football is, right? Everyone knows <clears throat> what football is. Football uh, is, uh, is a sport or is a game that the uh, two sides play to see who's going to win and who's going to be victorious. And uh, uh, as they have sides, you know, as we, uh, and maybe some of you kept up with it. I just kept up a little bit uh, with the uh, NFL draft this past week. You know, it went on and people chose, team uh, owners and team managers chose who was going to be in there, uh, who's going to be in there on their team for the coming year and salaries and all those things. And so they had to pick the quarterbacks. They had to have the, the quarterback that they needed for their program. They had to have the running back that they needed for the program, the linebackers, the, the offensive line, the defensive line, all the different the receivers, all the different personnel. And that's good. <clears throat> you have to have <clears throat> all those players. You have to have all those people on those teams to make it work. You have to have the, the ones that sit on the bench that are backups because when one gets hurt, you got to have somebody to replace them because if somebody gets hurt and you don't have a replacement, then, then at some point there could be a forfeiture. And so you never want that in a game of football. And so we understand, we're looking at, we all know what that is. But you see, there's one thing that every, no matter what, 
what name quarterback to have, what name receiver to have, what name offensive line to have, what name player to have, you know, that is the greatest of all time or the greatest of this or greatest of that. And they can have all those they want, but without one thing, they cannot play the game of football. That's, that's a pigskin that they put on the ground that they play with called a football. You cannot play football without a football. You cannot play the game, the sport, without a football in your hand. You have to have that football to be able to play. And I want you to understand, just as that, you said, just as, as players and, and people on the field, they can play and they can run around, they can do what they want to, but they'll never score a touchdown without that football. They'll never be able to pass a touchdown pass without a football. They'll never be able to do it to receive, uh, recover a fumble without a football. They'll never be able to uh, tackle a, a quarterback sack without the football in the quarterback's hand. So we got to understand uh, that we can't, we can't have anything just like they can't play uh, football without the pigskin, without that football in their hands. We can't have the greatness and the good things of life without Jesus in our hearts. We can't have the good things of life and, and the great things, the miracles and the wonders and the signs that God has for us without Jesus in our life. We have to understand and we have to come back <coughs> to the knowledge <coughs> that it requires Christ in all of our lives. If we're going to be and experience what we should in this life, we need to have Christ. There's a lot of people in the world, people that are lost and undone, that don't know this experience. They're trying to make it through life, floating on a wheel, floating on the winds of life, floating on the storms of life, because they don't have Jesus in their heart. They haven't accepted Jesus in their life. They don't have Jesus uh, with them. They don't have Jesus in their uh, in their heart. They don't have Jesus with them. Uh, they don't have Jesus in their life. And so we've got to understand tonight uh, that we have to look at what uh, what Christ uh, what Christ does for our lives and what Christ will do for our lives and what Christ is and who he is in our life. We've got to determine. We've got to make a decision. You know, just like you hear it all the time, you're going to hear it again. A favorite verse in Joshua. As for me and my house, will serve the Lord. You know why? Because I'm determined to follow Jesus and we need to get back to the place in the church world that we'll follow Jesus and allow Jesus to be in our life. And so we'll keep what we have. So first of all, I want you to understand what Jesus does. He cleanses us. First John 1 and 7. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Hallelujah. Jesus is the one that comes on the inside. Hallelujah. It was Jesus that hung on Calvary some 2,000 years ago. It was Jesus that hung, hallelujah, between heaven and earth, between two thieves. Hallelujah. So you and I could have forgiveness of sin so we could be sin free today. So we could go from a sinner to a winner. Hallelujah. We could be what God wants us to be. We could be uh, without sin. We're supposed to go and serve the Lord. Go and sin no more. But the Bible tells us we got to go and we got to live right and we got to live holy. But you see, because Jesus comes in and cleanses the things that we've done in our past, the bad things. He cleanses it just like you say if you was in Sunday school this morning, you sang the wonderful illustration that Candace did with the potato. That was awesome. Hallelujah, showing the, that, that God cleanses and, and takes away the sin and the and the spots and the blemishes and the rain. He takes away all of those things. Because you see, that's that's what he does. His blood, his precious blood that was shed on Calvary <clears throat> some 2,000 years ago does that. Hallelujah. He makes us pure. When he comes on the inside, he does away with that sin that is dark in our life, that is crushing our life. You can see a, a, a picture of a heart, uh, you know, a heart shape. And you can see it tonight before we got saved. That heart was black and crusted over. You know, kind of like everybody's had it fallen and got hurt at some point and had a scab before, right? Kind of like that scab. That's exactly what our heart looks like. That's exactly what it looked like before we got saved. That scab is exactly, that scab is exactly what uh, what, what it looks like in our in our lives before we get saved. And, and it just looks nasty. And sometimes, you, you know, and I, I won't gross you out, but you know, sometimes you have those sores with the scabs that ooze, right? That's exactly what sinners do when they're out here in this world doing the things of the world. They're oozing out that, that, that stench, that smell of ungodliness, that stench and that smell of things that's wrong, that stench and that smell of things that's against God and God's kingdom and what God desires and what God wants. And so they ooze that out. But let me tell you, when Jesus comes on the scene, hallelujah, and he does away with the wound, he does away with the with the scab, he does away with the oosiness, he does away with all that stench and all those problems of sin. And what he does is he cleanses, hallelujah, hallelujah, pure from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. He doesn't miss anything, hallelujah, he gets it all, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when kids <coughs> when kids get in the tub or the, 
showers and they take a shower and they're little kids and they get in there. Sometimes when they're scrubbing or they're washing, sometimes they miss something, right? They might not get the in between their toes. You know, you've all we've all said that to our kids. You know, you, you didn't get in between your toes or you didn't get your fingernails cleaned out, right? Or toenails, you didn't do that. And so they miss a uh, <clears throat> they miss a little spot on them sometimes when they uh, when they're in there because they're learning how to how to clean cleanse and cleanse yourself and all and because we're human you know we can miss a spot we can you know miss something but let me tell you Jesus doesn't miss anything hallelujah when he comes on the inside he sees that darkness he sees that sin he sees that problem he sees those things we've been caught up in and when he comes on the inside he cleanses from that and we don't have to worry about that oh yeah the devil he'll bring it back up he'll say you remember when you used to do this you remember when you used to hang around this one and do that you remember when you used to do this let me tell you hallelujah yes devil i remember what i used to do but i remember how jesus came into my life and cleansed me and forgave me for those sins and changed my soul and made me who i need to be and jesus bought me with his precious blood that he gave on calvary hallelujah i remember devil hallelujah what i used to be but i can tell you god freed me of that hallelujah you see the problem that gets a lot of christians is when the devil brings that up they'll start doubting themselves They'll start looking at themselves and say, well, I've been this bad or I've been so bad or been that. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how bad or how far you've went or how dark you uh, have, have begun at one time or have become. Jesus will still save to the uttermost. Hallelujah. He's still saved. Doesn't matter what, what sin had been committed, what situation. The only thing that he won't forgive is the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. That's the only thing that he won't forgive of. Hallelujah. So, so, so you see, and let me just meddle there. Hallelujah. People around this world that make fun of God and the Holy Ghost of God moving. And the people around the world that make fun of someone uh, that, that, that runs the aisle or gets full of the Holy Ghost, speaks in tongues, the Spirit of the others, and things of that nature. And what God's doing in their life, people better be careful because, because if they get to that place to where they blaspheme the Holy Ghost, then they can't be forgiven for that. And without forgiveness of sins, we cannot what? Get to heaven. So we've got to understand in our life that, you know what, no matter how bad we've been, hallelujah, uh, Jesus can still save. That's the only thing. Good. And so, you know, most people haven't got to that step yet because when, when they get to that step, they'll probably be to the place of a reprobate mind where they won't even think nothing bad about things and bad about what they're doing. So until we, uh, as long as we don't get to that place, praise God, hallelujah, he still cleanses to the uttermost. He still, still comes in, hallelujah. I remember, hallelujah, the, the night that he saved me. I remember him coming into my life and changing my life around. Hallelujah. Cleansing my heart. Hallelujah. I was on my way to a devil's hell, but thanks be to God when he cleansed me and said, you can inherit my kingdom. You can be where I am. Hallelujah. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Praise the Lord. I'm excited tonight. I, I was listening. Uh, I, I thought about a song today. I was, when I was in my office studying before church at home. <clears throat> I uh, thought about this song. It's called Jesus Man. And I'm going to see if I can get Reed or Loke or somebody to figure out how to play it so I can sing it. But anyways, <laughs> hallelujah. I'm a Jesus fan. And what it talks about is, is this person driving by and seeing people hooping and hollering and shouting. And, and says, you know, why are you so excited? And they say, well, I'm a football fan. It's an old song here. So I'm a football fan. And then the car, the, the, the person drives a little farther and hears music playing loud. And people all excited and shouting. And they say they brought music fans. And then he talks about going to church on Sunday and hearing about Jesus forgiven of sins. That Jesus cleansed and gave his life on Calvary. He gave, gave his life so they could be free. And begins to say, he talks about being a Jesus fan. Let me tell you tonight, hallelujah, Jesus came into my heart. So that makes me a Jesus fan. Hallelujah. He cleansed me of all my sin and shame. Hallelujah. That makes me a Jesus fan. Hallelujah. I can keep him in my heart if I want to. I can keep him in my life if I want to. And that's what I want to do. You say, what's wrong with the church world? They ain't made their mind up. That's a lot of wishy-washy, phony, baloney Christians in this world that want to give up Jesus. Hallelujah. He cleansed them and he kept them out of the mighty pits of hell and he changed their life, but they don't want to give up sin. They want to, they want to straddle the fence and say, well, a uh, little dab of sin will be okay and God will you know, understand and God won't uh, punish me for that. He understands. I still got to do this. I got to do that. No, he don't understand. Let me tell you, you dilly dally in sin, you'll be dilly dally in sin when he returns. Hallelujah. Because I'm telling you, with sin, we won't get to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to be clean. And that's what Jesus does. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep that cleanness. Amen. Keep what Jesus gives us. Secondly, he guides us. Oh, I like this. Isaiah 58 and 11. <clears throat> and the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bone 
waters, and thou shalt be like a water garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost guides us everywhere we go and everything we do. He's our guide if we'll put our trust in Him and our faith in Him. Amen. Tanner, my son, my oldest son, he, he, uh, he loves to hunt. He's a hunter and loves it. But more than him hunting, as far as for himself, he likes to carry people hunting on duck hunting trips or uh, turkey hunting trips. He likes to guide. He likes to guide. He likes to just show it. I guess have the thrill of watching somebody else get their first deer or duck or turkey or whatever the case. And he likes to do that. And just in this past month, you know, he's took some of his friends and guided them and they each killed a turkey. And so he's excited about that. And, and so he guides. He, he took them to the spot and he helped do the calling and setting up the decoys and getting prepared and getting all the things ready. And they went and they and he and, and went on the property and they was able to he was able to guide them to where they were successful. And so he enjoyed that. He enjoyed doing those things. And you see, Jesus enjoys guiding us into his promises. He enjoys <clears throat> guiding us. You see, he sets up, hallelujah, I like, I, maybe, maybe I shouldn't say it, but uh, he, he, he sets up decoys. The devil thinks he's going to win, but let me tell you, the devil's wrong. Hallelujah. He sets up decoys. The devil thinks he's knocking us down. Oh, yeah, he might knock you down. He might get you on your, uh, on your backside. He might get you laying down, but let me tell you, he's forgot about one thing. As long as you get up one more time than you got knocked down, you're still victorious. You're still, hallelujah, going for the glory of God. Let me tell you, Jesus is a wonderful God. Hallelujah. He got us. Uh, he can guide and He will guide us in the areas we need to go into, the places we need to go into, the things we need to do. Hallelujah. You know, like that old cliche or old saying, uh, what would Jesus do? You know, if we'll get back to the place, I'm saying, where would Jesus go? Where would he guide me in this manner, in this situation? Whenever you have a question, whenever you have a trouble, whenever you have a situation that you're unsure about, say, how would Jesus lead me into this? And you know what he'll do? He'll lead you. <coughs> you see, it's Jesus that guides you through that fiery furnace. The devil comes up and he says, well, I'm going to get you now, so-and-so. He comes up and says, I'm going to get you now. Hallelujah. He comes up and says, I'm going to get you, Brother John. That's what the devil says. I'm going to get you, Brother John. You, you're going to quit on me now. You're going you're to give up now. Hallelujah. And so he said, uh, so Brother uh, brother John goes through the fire, the trials of life, the thing because uh, people, don't, uh, people don't like uh, God being in John's life. People don't like how God's being a witness and a testimony. So you know what? Uh, the devil comes and attacks and says, I'm going to get you. But let me tell you, even through the fire, hallelujah, Jesus is guiding him and he's able to get through the fire when he enemy throws him in there and tries to attack. Jesus is right there beside of him and able to help him and able to help him overcome. Hallelujah. Able to bless him and minister in his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kind of like Daniel in the den of lions as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll do the same for us like he did for them. Hallelujah. You see the den of lions might come. Hallelujah. Brother George might get thrown in the den of lions. But let me tell you, hallelujah, Jesus or God, Brother George, out of that den of lions. Hallelujah, those lions might be roaring. Those lions might be chomping their teeth. Those lions might be doing this and doing that. But let me tell you, Jesus is right there in the midst of those lions. Hallelujah. Jesus is in the midst of that roaring devil. And no matter what the devil says, no matter what concoction he comes up with, he cannot de defeat Jesus. He cannot be victorious over Jesus. Jesus is always going to win. And he's going to be there with you through that dinner. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy might be chasing you. Hallelujah. Bad things might be coming your way towards you. But hallelujah, Jesus knows how. God knows how to wall the waters up so you can cross on dry ground. And when you get across, hallelujah, Jesus will cause the waters to come and destroy the enemy. Let me tell you, Jesus is still on the throne tonight. <coughs> Jesus is still there, hallelujah, making intercessory for us. And he wants to guide you. He wants to guide you into the right path, hallelujah, of victory. He wants to guide you right down the victory lane, hallelujah, victory lane. I remember when we used to have, matter of fact, we might have one son. We used to have victory marches. We'd get us a Kleenex or a handkerchief. Hallelujah. And we'd get to walking down the aisle. Victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. We'd sing that song or sing whatever song was playing. It didn't matter. The song doesn't really matter. But victory in Jesus is a good one. Hallelujah. And, and begin to walk and begin to talk and begin to, and begin to think about Jesus. Hallelujah. 
flying our flags for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Because he's kept us safe. Because he's guided us through the problems of life. Because he's guided us through the sickness and the bad times of life. Hallelujah. And he got us on through and we're able to keep going and be victorious. We're able to keep going and marching on. Hallelujah. As long as I can get my hand up, I will praise the Lord. As long as I can, hallelujah, lift a foot up, I will praise the Lord. As long as I got a word in my mouth, I will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise you the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to get back to a place where we understand Jesus has guided us. Hallelujah. And he's guided us to a great place. He's not guided us to the outhouse. Hallelujah. Where things are going to be terrible forevermore. He's guided us. Hallelujah, so to speak, to the White House, but it's greater than the White House. It's a place called heaven. Amen. He's guiding us there. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. You ever watch these shows and you've seen uh, these guides that would take people on tours? Maybe you've been on a tour before and had a guide and said, this is such and such as home. They they lived here and, and here's the, 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 the bed they slept on or here's the... Uh, the, uh, the dresser that they use or a mirror that they got their self ready in. You know, kind of like a Billmore State. Everybody been to Billmore State at some point? Or most people have. Anyways, they tell you, well, so-and-so is here. So, and, and so they, they guide you. They tell you all about it. You know what? When Jesus guides us, he tells us all about it. He tells us all about his love, all about his mercy, all about his joy, all about the excitement, all about the fun times that we can have for the glory of God. Let me tell you, you can have fun and be a Christian too. You can have fun and live holy and righteous. Hallelujah. You don't have to partake in things of the world. You don't have to partake in alcohol and drugs, pornography, all these things going on in this world to have fun. Let me tell you, I have more fun with Jesus than I ever had in the world. I have more fun, hallelujah, just serving Jesus, being what Jesus would happen to be, hallelujah, because he's guiding me into the right direction, into the right path, hallelujah. And he'll lead us and he'll help us. Amen. He'll lead us into the hearts of worship. He'll lead us into the hearts of praise, the hearts of song. See, what's happened <coughs> so many times that we've closed off that, closed off the entrance to our praise. You know, if we'd have a little more praise, we'd, we'd receive a Few more blessings. Amen. We'd have a little more praise. Hallelujah. God would give us more of our desires. Hallelujah. Yes, you know, Amen. let me just let me just <clears throat> say it in layman's terms. When you help someone or you 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 go, maybe you fix a meal for someone or you help someone, or maybe you, you mow their yard, or maybe you give them a monetary a piece of money, or whatever the case, you help somebody in a different manner. Maybe you do and if they never ever ever tell you thank you. The next time they ask, you're hesitant on helping them in whatever manner because they, they didn't thank you the first time. They took it for granted, right? Is it, am I the only one here that, that, that understands that? So uh, when we see that and we look at that, so then we, when we think about Jesus, we think about God, the Father, God, Son, God, and the Holy Ghost, if he keeps pouring out blessings and pouring out miracles and pouring out things in our life and we never thank him for what he's already done, do you not think he can be hesitant on giving us something else? If we don't use what he's given us, why are we wanting more? If, hallelujah. If you're asking God to be filled up, if you're asking him to fill your cup, his question may be to us is, what have you done with what's been in your cup already? It's already full. You haven't let any out. You see, if we keep a, if we keep our full cup and we don't release any, that he can't pour any more in. But when we release, hallelujah, and we tell that person about Jesus, or we pray with that one over sickness, or we reach out to that one that needs a help, a helping hand, or maybe reach out to that one that needs something in their life, and we help them, we pour into them. Guess what? God begins to pour into us because we've used what he gave us, and we've praised him for it. We've honored him for it. You see, we've got to get back to the place to where we allow Jesus to guide us. You know, everybody wants to, everybody, everybody wants to tell somebody else what to do, don't they? Across this world. Too many, too many people want to be the, the, uh, the ones in control instead of the workers. Hallelujah. But Jesus is the one that ought to be in control at all times in our life. He ought to be guiding us, leading us, helping us to go forth and do his will and do his work. Be what he'd have us to be. Hallelujah. He guides us. Oh, oh, oh and I'm getting to the one of the best parts. Thirdly, Jesus will get us to heaven. Amen. How many wants to go to heaven? Yes, amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Everybody wants to go to heaven. But like that saying says, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to go down. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to live as long as the Lord will let me live. Amen. That's my mindset. Hallelujah. I want to go into rapture. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, my, 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 my feelings is I don't want to go anywhere. I don't, I don't want nobody uh, uh, having to put me in the ground or whatever to keep my, this old carnal body in the ground. I want to hallelujah be praising the Lord, magnify God, and all of a sudden the, the trumpet sound and, and my feet just take off. That's the way I want to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the way we want to go in the rapture. But you know what? If I had to go by way of the grave, let me tell you, hallelujah. As long as I keep Jesus as Lord of my life, he will guide me and lead me into a place called heaven. Listen to this. John 14 and 3. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. John 14 and 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, <coughs> the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way. No matter what people have said to you, no matter what people have told you, no matter what political person or pe uh, famous person or persons or people or groups in this whole world have said there's many ways to heaven, there's only one way. His name is Jesus. Yes. These people can say, well, you can't say Jesus because these people have so many religions and have so many gods. Let me tell you, they're going to end up in a devil's hell. If they don't go by the way of Jesus, they will not make it to heaven. The only way to heaven is through Jesus. The only yeah. way to heaven is through Jesus in our life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to follow about me. But let me tell you, hallelujah. He said, if I go prepare a place, then, then you may be there also. If you went away, I know he prepared it. You know why? I know he got there because the Holy Ghost came back. Hallelujah. The day of Pentecost so we understand, hallelujah, that Jesus is alive and well, and he's coming back. This same Jesus that went away is coming back in like manner, hallelujah, for you and I one day. Jesus will be coming back, hallelujah, to take us with him to heaven. He's going to prepare a place. Hallelujah. I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Doesn't that just make you get excited and want to shout that where Jesus is, we can be there too? Amen. Hallelujah. We can be there too. You know, it's... As, as we've all had to work and work at different places, you know, we've all, and, 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 ones of, and you've had children or had family members that um, you had to leave at home when you went to work. You know, you wanted to spend time with them, but you had to go to work or whatever. And so you, uh, so you get there, but the people, you know, a lot of times they won't go with you. You know, kids will want to go to work. I remember when Megan was little, uh, when I worked at the police department in Mount Gilead, I'd go give them a paycheck each week, and I'd take her, take her with me. We'd walk in there, and I'd give them a paycheck, and just, you know, <clears throat> spend the time she wanted to go with me there. And, you know, a lot of times, they, you know, growing up, the kids, they would want to go, uh, when I would go to work, when I'd go here or there, they'd want to go with me. And sometimes they could go, sometimes they could You know, when I was really working uh, and stuff, they couldn't go, and at nighttime, all nighters, I, they couldn't work, they'd come with me to work. And so they, they couldn't go with me. But, but here, we don't have to worry about not being able to go. Hallelujah with our Heavenly Father. We, we don't have to worry about not being able to go with Jesus because he said he's going to prepare a place that we can be there with Jesus. We can be right there with him. We don't have to worry about not being able to go. We don't have to worry about having to stay home. Hallelujah. He gives us an opportunity that we can be there with him. And that place in heaven, that place is greater than anybody has ever told you or anything you've ever read or any thing you've ever found. Heaven is great and wonderful. Hallelujah. Jesus has got to be in our lives for us to make heaven our home. It's got to be Jesus. It can't be some other false idol or false god. It can't be money. It can't be fame and fortune. It can't be the preacher. It can't be the Sunday school teacher. It can't be the singers. It can't be the musicians. It's got to be Jesus in the heart. Amen. It's got to be Jesus. Now we're supposed to love everybody. And I understand that we love our preachers and love and love our, our teachers and our singers and our musicians and all that. that we got to love people, and that's what we're supposed to do. But hallelujah. They won't get us to heaven. What gets to heaven is Jesus in our life. Now they can encourage us. Just like we witness the people out in the highways and hedges and encourage them to accept Jesus, encourage them to be a Christian, encourage them to do what's right and to live for the Lord and do, do the right things. <coughs> we encourage them, but we can't make them, can't force them. You know the old saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of you have not been like this, but I preached and taught or, or or say it, and since being a Christian, not just behind a pulpit, to my telling people that they need to accept Jesus. Jesus will change their life. But there's a lot of people that I've told about Jesus that have not accepted Jesus and may not ever accept Jesus. 
They've decided in their life they don't want Jesus. And you know what? You know what their determination is? That they don't want heaven as their home. That's their determination. I can't force them. I can't make them. I can't force people to get good things. But what I can do is I can keep telling other people. I can keep sharing with people that Jesus is alive and well. I can keep sharing with people that Jesus is great. Jesus is wonderful. You can do the same thing. Hallelujah. Jesus will get you to heaven. Hallelujah. That's the greatest, most important thing we got to remember. At the end of the day, where are we going? At the end of the day, where are we going to be for eternity? Eternity is a long time. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and continually ever. That's how long eternity is. At the end of the day, where is our eternal home? Where are we going to spend the rest of eternity? At the end of the day, that's all that matters. doesn't matter how many dollars you make today. doesn't matter how many, how many this you have or that you have. What matters is Jesus right in here. Jesus is the only way to heaven, church. He's the only way. I came tonight to encourage you. I came tonight to let you know, to share with you that Jesus is what Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. He, he cares about you. He will get you to heaven. Hallelujah. He'll guide you. Hallelujah. And he'll cleanse you. He cleanses, he guides, and he gets you to heaven. That's what Jesus does. I don't know why so many people in this world push him away. I don't know why so many people don't want Jesus in their life. People want everything but Jesus. Even people that have been brought up in church across this world, they want everything but Jesus. Right, amen. They want to do everything for everybody and everything but Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, if people in this world would, would do as much trying to just serve Jesus as they do try not to serve Jesus, there'd be a lot of good preachers around this world. Be a lot of good teachers, a lot of good ministers, a lot of good singers, and all kind of stuff for the glory of God. Because people work so hard in trying to get out of doing for God. Amen. Amen. People work so hard in trying to do anything for Jesus. If we work that hard doing for Jesus, you'd be surprised at whose life would be changed, whose soul would be blessed, whose life would be touched, whose community would be turned upside down, whose state, whose county, whose community would be turned upside down. Whose lives will be changed forevermore? We try so many times, so hard across the church world to please everybody but Jesus. It's time the church world get back to pleasing God. The church world get back to pleasing Jesus. The church world get back to pleasing the one who called you, the one who saved you, the one who came into your life, cleansed you, guided you to where you're at tonight. We got to keep what we have. <clears throat> the cleansing, cleansing. Hallelujah. The fellowship with Christ, the, the guiding. That he guides us and leads us into the right path. The path of righteousness that we have and that we're in. Hallelujah. The kindness and the gentleness and the meekness and the love and the compassion that he guides us to. And, and, and that place called heaven that is our reward. Hallelujah. That, that reward is so wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember one time I was working for the police department. And I had to work an off-duty detail. And they had some kind of, some kind of drawing for a big, nice grill. And... Uh, I said, well, I'll, I'll put, my, put, put it down. And what it did was they used a, uh, used a radio, you know, one of those dial radios. They used a radio and you put the channel uh, that you thought, you, you put whatever channel that you, uh, that you thought it would be on or something like that. That, that. That's what you put on there. And so as I put it there, they used that dial. And as I put my number down, they went all through. They started turning that, that radio and radio. And lo and behold, <clears throat> guess who got a reward? Guess who won that big grill? But I want to be real. But you know, I've told you before, I ain't so much nowadays, but I was a wheeler dealer. So I won that thing and got it home, and that thing was a high dollar thing. And there was somebody at work that wanted it much more than I did because they had the greenbacks, you know what I'm saying? They had the greenbacks, and so they uh, they, they bought it and they paid for it, and uh, uh, so they took it on home. But that's a nice grill, and I, and I won it, and, and, and it was really great. It was nice, you know, but let me tell you. That don't even compare a drop in the bucket to how great that reward's going to be for heaven. Hallelujah. When we win heaven, when we get to heaven, we're going to see, Lord, thank you for helping me to get through it all. Lord, thank you for helping me to understand that I had to make it. Hallelujah. Because when the way gets rough and the way gets tough and the winds and the storms blow, let me tell you, nothing, nothing, nothing is worth us losing heaven. Amen. Nobody. No, no thing, no, no, no place, no nothing is worth losing heaven over. We've got to keep what we got. We've got to keep his cleanliness, 
is cleansing in our life. We've got to, we've got to uh, keep uh, uh, allowing him to lead us in the right direction and do the right things, what he has us do. And remember, we've got an eternal home in heaven if we're trusting the Lord. Keep what we have. I came tonight to encourage you. God sent me by to tell you, just hold on. Like that song uh, that Sister Rita was saying, what she was saying, just hold on. Just a little bit longer. Helps on the way I can feel it get stronger. Hold on. Let the dope brother sing that song. Hallelujah. Hold on. That's what we've got to do. Tough times may come. Perilous times are here. But we can hold on, church. We don't have to give up. Amen. Keep holding on. Remember, keep what you got. Keep Jesus. Keep Jesus. Keep who you got. Jesus in your life. You'll stand with me tonight. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We're all home boat. We're just we're gonna pray tonight. These altars are always open. If you want to come to the altar and pray, you're welcome to. But as we pray tonight, I ask you, just talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These altars are open. If anyone here tonight not saved or know Jesus, you're welcome to you welcome to come pray and ask the Lord into your life. Anyone watching live stream, lost and undone? All you gotta do is ask the Lord into your life to save you, to change your life, and to cleanse you, to make you right. Hallelujah. That's all you got to do. All you got to do is ask the Lord into your life. Tell the Lord you're sorry. Tell the Lord to forgive you and change you. Hallelujah. When we pray in just a moment, Hallelujah. I want you to ask the Lord to help you to hold on to what he's given you. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to his clean, cleansing life, cleansing power. Hold on to his guiding and hold on and be what he had you to be. And hold on and make it to heaven. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any others? Hallelujah. The altars are always open. You just pray. Just be praying, hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, reach down and touch my brother. Reach down and bless him, talk to him, his soul to speak. Reach down and minister in his life. Lord, you see his need, you see what he's asking for, God. I ask you to help him and change him and touch him, Lord. Lord, he, he needs your help right now, he needs your touch. Lord, I just ask you to do it. Lord, he came out with faith, he stepped out in faith, he stepped out in honor to you, God. Lord, he knows he can't make it uh, without you, Lord. He knows he can't make it without you touching his life. Lord, I ask you to touch him in a mighty way. Reach down and bless him. Reach down and minister in his home. Minister in his heart. Lord, do a mighty word. Lord, use him. Lord, bless him, God. Touch Nelson tonight. Lord, reach down and bless him in a mighty way. Be, help him to be what he, he needs to be for you. Lord, reach down and do a mighty work. Lord, do that transformation in him. Whatever he's asking for, whatever he needs. Lord, I know that you're on the throne tonight. I know you're able and capable and willing to help him, Lord. Help him to see that way, to see that path. Lord, I just ask you to touch him tonight. Ask you to bless him and be with him. And Lord, lead him and guide him. Lord, do a mighty work in his life. Bless him in a mighty way. Lord, I ask you to touch him tonight, God. Do the work. We believe you. We praise you for that. Lord, thank you for that. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, Lord. You've done a, done a mighty work in his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be in your house to serve you and honor you. Thank you for reaching everyone here. God, we ask you to reach down and touch every life, every heart, every home tonight. Lord, reach down and bless the lives. Bless those that are watching, those that are here. Lord, there's anyone lost and undone, not saved, not righteous, not living for you, Lord. I ask you to touch them top of the head and soul and feet. Reach down and help them to get right, get saved, and accept you in their life before it's everlasting too late. Lord, bless them in a mighty way. Let your power and your authority shine forth. Lord, move in a mighty way. Lord, touch their lives. Lord, help them to make things right before it's everlasting too late. God, I ask you to be with them. Lead them with God and help them, Lord. Minister in their lives. Lord, do a mighty work. Lord, you're on the throne tonight, God. I know that you're safe to the other most. Lord, those watching live stream, those here tonight, Lord, that need your touch. Lord, need you to reach down and bless, reach down and save them. Touch them in a mighty way. Lord, those that are blood all ready to go to heaven. God, I ask you to help us to hold strong, to stand firm on your word, to continue to do your will, and be that light, be that witness, be that testimony, be what you have us to be. Lord, reach out and touch us, use us, mold us, make us for your testimony. Lord, help us to understand we got to let you uh, keep cleansing us and help us to be what we need to be, holy, righteous, pure, without spot, blemish, or wrinkle, without sin, without negative, without bad in our lives. Lord, help us to be right, holy, righteous, pleasing unto you. And Lord, help us to uh, be able to understand your guidance and lead us into the path of righteousness and we'll be able to go forth and do your will. Lord, I ask you to reach down and touch and minister in our homes and our hearts, Lord, reach down and touch our life. We help us to be ready to go to heaven when you come back, God. I ask you to bless every life, every heart. Lord, everyone that's not here tonight for whatever reason, bless them in the mind. We touch everybody, keep them safe, watch over them as they go about their different ways. Lord, bless every life and every heart, every home tonight. God, do the work. I believe you tonight and I trust you. We thank you for all that you do. Give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Appreciate you coming to worship the Lord. Thank you for being here to worship God. Thank you for watching live stream. Thank you for being here. Don't forget, Tuesday night conference call, Wednesday night service. Be invited to be telling people. Don't forget, Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you as well. God bless you. Hallelujah. Have a good night.